Okay, I would like to welcome the one and only Volcor X. Uh, hello, Peter. Thanks for having me. I, I want to talk about your new album, The Loop, and yeah. uh, and what all. What was the genesis of this album? Is it a continuing tale of of the the sort of trilogy of albums, or or, or what is the the story of behind it? Uh, yeah, it's. Um... The, the new album is a sort of a prequel uh, to my uh, first uh, and second album. And um, uh, I, I didn't really think about it when I, when I started to work on the first album. I didn't think I, I'm, I'm going to do a, a, a trilogy and, uh, um, and go uh, with, uh, with a sort of totally epic story uh, um, uh, in the course of three albums. But uh, when, I, when, uh, when, when I started to work on the album, one thing I I um I really uh, wanted to do was to uh, um, to bring the people who who like Volcorix to something really um, new, something that didn't really uh, listen to before. Um, and um, because if if you have listened to my uh, to my three albums, the first one is more electronic, uh, the second one is a bit more uh, hybrid uh, with a bit more electric and uh, with more guitars and uh, real drums and stuff like that and the new one is uh, definitely more in the, um, more electric in uh, uh, in a way that it's it's more post rock and post metal than uh, electronic i would say yeah yeah i agree. and uh, yeah and those that's something i um i i really wanted to do with this third album and i think um uh it 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 works quite well with the people who already know, know Volcorix, um, because I, I discussed with a lot of my fans on uh, on social medias and uh, and uh, on uh, Discord. They all recognize Volcorix in the new album, but I think people who would uh, we would uh, discover uh, Volcorix with the loop um, would have a hard time thinking that it's the same artist who made uh, This Means War in uh, 2016, uh, because the sound is really really different. Uh, so um, my my second album, uh, this is our planet now, was was a sort of transition uh, between uh, the electronic album, uh, the first one, and this new album. Um, but this new album is really what um, I think I I really wanted to do. Okay. Uh, this is this is the the the, the goal uh, I wanted to achieve. Um, um, but uh, as you can uh, as you can guess. Uh, the first album was what it is it's it's just the first album it's you don't really know what you want to do and uh, um so uh yeah this this was this was a um a journey for me uh, as an artist from from the first album to this one um but i think i've i reached uh, with the loop i've reached the point uh i i wanted to make yeah gotcha now on the the previous two albums you you did use audio samples and i you took those from like old sci-fi movies, yeah, things like that. On the loop, you you have uh, voice act actress Becky Shrimpton, yep, uh, doing the the interlude pieces. Uh, I have a few questions about that. It's so well done. One, how did you find her? And two, uh, were those intermission periods the dialogue w was that written beforehand, or did you write that later? as a way to connect the pieces does that make sense uh, yeah uh the, the dialogues uh first they were written by uh um, a british uh writer who is called uh, benjamin dads mm -hmm. um he's a long time fan of volcor x and um uh, i knew he was uh, writing books so um i um when when i started working on the album um i really wanted to have this story driven uh um, piece, you know, I I really wanted it to to uh, to be music and dialogues and and tell a story with uh, by by uh, putting all this together. Um, so uh, I maybe had I don't know maybe three or four tunes ready ready for the for the new album, and uh, then I I contacted Ben and um, I I asked him if he was interested in uh, in working with me on the uh, on the album, and uh, he was uh, of course he was delighted <laughs> and. Uh, uh, um, the story was, I had a, a, a foggy version of the story in my head, you know, because I'm, I'm not a writer. I, I, I don't know how to write a story. I don't know how to write dialogues. So, um, I needed someone to, um, to, to take this 
this uh, seed and and make a story out of it. Um, and uh, this is what Ben did. Um, he wrote the story and the dialogues. Um, there was a bit of uh, back and forth between him and and, and me uh, and him, and um, but it was it was really smooth. Uh, I mean, he, he he really got what I wanted to to express. Uh, there are maybe like ten minutes of dialogues uh, in in the album. Uh, it's very short. You can tell something very very uh, deep and uh, yeah. detailed uh, in ten minutes, but. I think it works. I think it's 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 going where I want it to go. Um, and uh, then once uh, the dialogues were written, uh, I had of course to find someone to to voice them. Um, so um, I I looked on the internet um, uh, to a website uh, on a website uh, who just offers um, voiceover services. Um, find some actresses and uh, and then I found Becky uh, very very quickly. I think she was, was one of the first uh, I found because most of the um, uh, of the voiceover artists on the website they were um, offering service for uh, commercials, uh, videos for enterprises and stuff like that. And right. but none of them re was uh, really speaking about acting. Like but uh, Becky, right. yeah, yeah. And Becky, she had um, she had that. Uh, uh, the title, like I will voice your character or something like that, um, and uh, and she was speaking about character, about acting, and uh, that's what drew me to her. So I sent her a quick message and uh, and uh, and and the script, and she 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 wrote me back like uh, the day after with a um, a few lines. She she spoke in in our micro in our, sorry in our microphone, and, uh, and that was it. I, I was sold. She was perfect. Um, and so uh, we um, we decided to to record with her, and uh, it was probably the best decision we we took <laughs> because yeah. she she really nailed it. She she's perfect, and and she's so professional and uh, and uh, easy easy to work with. She's uh, yeah, really yeah. really good. She did a really good job. It's, it's yeah, yeah, very. Yeah. It doesn't come across as an actor reading a script at all. It, it, she's really professional. Yeah, and the thing is that she she didn't have someone uh to you know to tell the uh, uh how would you say in English the the, the other uh, you know the, the other character who is uh, speaking in the in the dialogues, uh, she didn't even have the, uh, the context. The rec the re yeah, the recordings. She she had the, the the context. She had the script, but she didn't have the the response from uh, the actual uh, actor. Uh, oh. For, yeah. So she she did it all alone, and she, and it was perfect. That's great. Mm. Now, so when you're writing music like that, do you tend, to, especially on things like The Loop, a lot of it's very post-rock and it's almost parts of it are ambient. Um, do you tend to write out the song in advance, like in your head or chart it out? Or are you sitting down at the keyboard and playing with sounds? And then once you get a sound, go... Oh, from there, I like this noise. And from here, I can go to this. And from here, okay, I like this. I can go from here. Or do you basically know, okay, I'm going to do these chord changes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a one uh, way of, of uh, writing a song. Um, but uh, most of the time, I, I I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, uh, sometimes, yeah, it's just playing with one of my synths. And uh, I like this sound. Oh, and this sound. I, I can do this with this sound. I can do this chord uh, or this this arpeggio or whatever. And uh, and then I, it will it will give birth to a song. Or sometimes it's just my guitar. I'm noodling with the guitar and find a, a, a riff and or, or something, and and it will give birth to a song again. Right. And uh, sometimes, uh, and this is the I think the most <laughs> uh, unusual uh, way I have to to compose songs sometimes. Uh, um, sometimes I I uh, compose songs um, from the end because I know uh, what I want to reach, but oh. I don't know I'm, how I'm gonna uh, arrive there. You know, so I have my 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 peak. You know, my my climax my climax. Um, and then uh, the game is to find how how to to go there. Um, so I I compose the song in reverse. Uh, so I'm I've got this part. So. How did I arrive there? And then I find another part, which yeah, okay, that works. And then, well, but how did I arrive there? And then I go back again and and try to to you know to compose the song in reverse. Um, it's not 
uh, I, I don't always do that, but it it happens sometimes on on you know on the on the songs who have a really really um, big ending uh, with a, with a build up and a, uh, a very climatic end. And um, uh, I'm sometimes, thinking of yeah. shoot them up. Um, no, not not this one. No, really, no. <laughs> yeah, I would have yeah, guessed yeah, no, that one. No, um, no songs like um, uh, well, the loop. Okay, my, yeah. My new album, this one, yeah, she was composed like that. Um, interesting, I said she. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and um, I, I, I had, I had the, the, the ending part. I knew I wanted the solo on this part, but I didn't know how to reach this part, so um, I composed it in reverse, and uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun to do. So, do you use mostly? synthesizers or do you also use like patches through a midi controller or, or combination or what do you use um i use i use a, a bunch of synths yeah um uh and uh, an eight string uh, guitar mm -hmm. and uh and uh, and a bass and uh um i don't have uh, any uh, fancy controllers or anything I, I just have my synths and my guitars um and the drums are programmed uh, from a to z yeah, I noticed you over the years of the albums you've changed, especially your snare sound uh, from the first album to this one. Um, oh yeah, which you know, of course, the this means war is more of a more of a '80s processed yeah snare sound. This is when you're going for more of a, a, a real kit sound. Yeah, yeah, and both have their places, but yeah, yeah, of course, but uh, but so, you know, now that I've released released uh, the loop. Uh, I'm uh, I'm singing in the back of my head. I, I would like to to uh, to hear uh, this means war with with this kind of production, you know. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure it would work, but um, uh, <laughs> I might try something. What coming up, growing up, and and not just growing up, but throughout your life, what musicians really inspired you? Like, I know that you were into metal. Were you also into like Vangelis and and more like film score things or what musicians inspired you oh uh so if we go way back um i think my first uh the first music music that makes made me feel something you know um even though i was a kid i was really really little uh but um i think it was uh it was pink floyd Mm -hmm. um because my father was a, a big fan of pink floyd and was playing like uh you know uh Uma Guma or uh, wish you were here in yeah. in, in, in loop <laughs> uh so um the wish you were here is probably my favorite album ever um and uh um around a, a bit later i think i discovered uh jean-michel jarre and uh and vangelis mm -hmm. and then I was I was totally hooked on their music because yeah it was instrumental no lyrics no no nothing I could because I was a kid I couldn't speak English at all uh, so I I didn't understand the the, the lyrics in the songs but uh, with Vangelis and uh, and Jean-Michel Jarre the, there was no, no problem, need for yeah. that and and I I think this is I was maybe I don't know maybe eight or nine and uh, I, I realized that instrumental music was uh, universal you know it it was. Uh, Totally understandable by 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 anybody uh, where wherever he was on the on the planet. So, um, but yeah, um, my my early days were my 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 first big memories of music are uh, prog rock and uh, and uh, synthesizer music. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar at all with a band called Osric Tentacles? Yeah, I I, I don't think I've, I've listened to them, uh, but I know the name. I've I've seen it many times, but. Uh, it's one of those bands, you know. You you, you uh, I have to listen to that, but you yeah, never do. You should. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you should. They're, they're they're very. I've I've been listening to them for thirty years. Yeah, you yeah. should check them out. Yeah. Okay, I will. Um, have him forgive me if I pronounce his, his name wrong. Uh, Sylvain Coudre, the guitar. Yeah. Uh, excellent player. Oh yeah. Is that I, I know that you know him and you have him work on most of your stuff. Is there a value to you besides just liking the way he plays? Do you like the idea of keeping a consistent uh, voice in your music? And what I mean by that is I think some bands suffer when every album comes out and there's a new singer or a new guitarist oh. mm -hmm. and there's no way for the audience to, to find a sense of commonality. Is that something that you're like, I want to keep the same player 
contributing so it sounds consistent or is that just because it's he's easy to work with no it's um uh it's not it's more uh, of uh finding the right person that for the right song um because uh, I've, I've worked with uh, other guitarists I've, on mm -hmm. my first album there was also um, Dimi K who made a solo on Beacon mm -hmm. uh, then Sylvain made a solo on This Means War and then second album I had a solo from uh, Feather on, on Stratos uh, and then Sylvain making a solo on, on the, the ending track right. and on the loop I, I only have Sylvain because it's it's not really um, uh, an album um, that needs many solos I think Right. Um, but that last song, I, I felt it needed something, you know, to 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 um, to make people understand that we reached the end of the album. This is gonna be epic, and uh, uh, and I, I couldn't see anyone else than Sylvain. No, he did a great job. Oh yeah, yeah, and 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 it's becoming a, a bit of a is 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 closing all my albums. Uh, so um, I. I I always, uh, when I compose the last track of the of the of the album, I always think, okay, I have to find this place for Sylvain at the end of the song and at the end of the album. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is this people could find this is a gimmick, you know, but nah, it's it's a bit more than that. It's just uh, I love the way it plays, and and it always gives me what I want when uh, when I have uh, this song needing needing a solo. I I, I know it will do exactly what uh, what the song needs. Yeah, yeah, I think if he fits your music very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's a good friend, so we can you you can we can speak. You know, uh, if if it does something with, with the, which doesn't fit, uh, then I will tell him, and uh, and uh, he will go, okay, no problem. I make something else. And most of the time, he send he send me a solo. He send <clears throat> sorry, he sends me a solo. And then uh, I say, okay, this is perfect. And then a couple of days later, he will send me another one and say, oh, okay, this this one is better. <laughs> here is the here is the pure, the previous land and and take this one. So yeah, it's uh it's cool because it is really dedicated and uh, uh and I love the way it plays. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good to have a good working relationship together. Yeah, all. yeah. Let's talk about the visual component because you've always had strong visuals. Obviously, Volcor X as a character and the artwork uh, on the albums, and I know yeah. you've released vinyl and things like that. How mm -hmm. important to you is the visual aspect? Do you think it's is it necessary or do you think it's a great addition to the music? Oh, I think it's absolutely necessary and it's a great addition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I've worked with different artists because um, uh, my my music evolves from album to album. And I think uh, when when I when I uh, want to to think about the the artwork, um, I always think uh, that what worked for for the previous album won't work for the new one. So uh, this is why I, I had different artists for for each um, each uh, artwork. Um, but yeah, it's a very very uh, very important part, and this is uh, something that I discussed a long time before uh, it's done with uh, with the artists. Um, and uh, I think the, the the artwork that Alex made for the the new album is uh, is absolutely wonderful. Um, and uh, I've. I have the, the vinyl just beside me here. It looks gorgeous. <laughs> and yeah, it's a very important part. Uh, and it's also it's also a bit um it can be a bit of a of uh, a bit tricky sometimes because uh, you know my first uh first music video was a pixel art video. I don't know if you've seen it. Um Yeah, I have. Oh you have? Yes. Uh, so it 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 um categorized Volcorex, you know, at the time in uh, some sort of, uh, you know, video game retro thingy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something I did not want to do again, uh, even though a lot of people asked for the uh, the, the follow-up to this music video. and uh, But I didn't want to do another pixel art video. So that's why I, I, uh, I had a, um, a full CGI video made for, for the new album. Yeah, you talk about the one with the void video. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I try to to um, to work with artists uh, who can uh, follow me in my evolution. You know. Yeah, I think it's it's very good to to change. I think that's what keeps it interesting. Yeah. Um, there's there's both things. Like, yes, always had Roger Dean doing all their 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 artwork, but it's it's yeah. also interesting to have a new visual approach every time. Yeah, I, I would. I would have loved to have. So, yeah, I would have loved to have something. You know, maybe more co coherent uh, from start to finish. But 
I've, I've changed so much from uh, the first album to now. Uh, it, it wouldn't make sense, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd rather take the 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 hard work, the hard work with with my with me, uh, and and let it evolve with me. And yeah, I, I think it works very well to have it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's epic space odysseys. It, why shouldn't it change with each new journey? It's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Explain to everyone the best places for those who aren't aware of where to find you, where to find your music, where they can buy it, download well, it, stream it, etc. Um, my music is available pretty much everywhere on, on streaming sites. Uh, and um, uh, you can also find uh, my uh, digital albums on Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. It's volcarix.bandcamp.com. And um, all physical releases are available from volcarix.com. Um, I have a web shop here with uh, all the vinyl, T-shirts, uh, CDs, cassettes, uh, and uh, everything you, you, you might want to to wear or, or listen to or, or even pin the wall or whatever. Ray guns. <laughs> I don't have ray guns yet. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get on that. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Essential. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Well, very good, very good. Well, it's certainly interesting. i uh, kind of getting a glimpse inside the uh, mystique of Volcor X and uh, how you do what you do. I I'm certainly appreciate you sharing with it. Anytime, Peter. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.